Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are talking about the wonderful, awesome, sexy uh, business insurance for your <laughs> Amazon and e-commerce account, and we have the best of the best here. Ashlyn Haddon is here with us, and she is going to talk about all things e-commerce, Amazon, and business insurance because, let's be real, we need to protect our assets, right? And I know that's right. part of your, um, <laughs> your kind of your slogan or whatever, but I love that because reality is we don't spend a ton of time building up a business for it to, um, I don't know, be burned up in a warehouse or getting a UPS truck hit and then all of your inventory gets lost or all the other millions of problems that you guys see. So we only want the best for you guys. And the best is of course, Ashlyn and her agency. And I'm going to let her talk about that in just a moment. But first I really wanted to give you guys the brief announcement that despite the pandemic, despite all of the craziness is going on, the show must go on. And and therefore, although we're not doing a live workshop in January, we are going to do, um, whole, we're going to do some walkthroughs, trade show walkthroughs. So I talked about this last week. If you didn't listen to it, go back and listen to it then. But I'm doing a limited number of 15 people in person, very small groups, social distancing and all just to make sure that we're all safe and healthy. But I am going to the Dallas Marketplace Um trade show in January, and I'm going to do a day of walkthroughs. So those of you guys who want to come and join me, mommyincome.com slash walkthrough. You can learn about getting the mini course and coming with me personally on the trade show walkthroughs to be able to connect with reps, get your catalogs, get your inventory and get yourself set for the year. So more information, mommyincome.com slash walkthrough. And I would love to be able to see you and meet you in person, of course, social distancing and all healthy things so that we can continue because honestly, the show must go on. Business is going forward. Life is moving forward. This might be our new normal, but we got to learn to adapt. And my adaptation is we're just going to do walkthroughs instead of a full workshop so that we can stay a little bit more distance and a little bit more healthy. And as that becomes more available and more safety precautions we come in, we will fully get back to workshop. So mommyingum.com slash work <laughs> workshop. No, don't go to workshop, go to walkthrough <laughs> and then we'll see you there. Okay. Now let's talk to Ashlyn. So Ashlyn, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Okay. So a little bit, first of all, introduce yourself because there's some people, I don't know why, but there's some people that don't know you yet. And I would love to be introduced to them. Well, my name is Ashlyn Haddon. I'm the owner of Ashlyn Haddon Insurance. My office is based in Noblesville, Indiana. So we're in the middle of the cornfield and the soybeans in Indiana. Um, I am a mommy of two crazy, crazy boys, um, single mommy of two crazy, crazy boys. So I'm, I'm going crazy over here with this whole pandemic and working from home sometimes and uh, all this e-learning and all this fun stuff. So I'm right here with you guys. Um, my agency has been in business right around five years now. We focus on e-commerce sellers. We do everyone from um, RAO and wholesale to those of you who are getting into private label, who are expanding to like Walmart and Bed Bath and & Beyond and those types of things. So anywhere from Amazon, eBay, Wayfair, Jet, all of those fun platforms to opening your own private label. So we help everything. And then once you're done with that, then we also do your home auto and life insurance. So one-stop shop for all your insurance needs. Yes, you guys, um, bundling, right? Of course, like absolutely. I know those really dumb commercials on TV about bundling and I kind of laugh because my family, you know, we're all about wholesale bundles, right? I mean, that is right. like, I'm the bundle queen, but it's not just <laughs> bundling your products for Amazon. It's the best way. It's of course, you save more when you put bundle all of your insurances together. And of course you get those like discounts. So like move over State Farm, it's time right. for real e-commerce. People that understand the language, you guys, because I'll tell you what, the first time I called about insurance, which was unfortunately before Ashlyn was even around, and these kind of people were looking at me like, well, that's a really non-traditional way to do business. And you have to have this writer and that writer and this, that. And I was just like, mm -hmm. they have no clue what I'm right. doing here. And they and still don't. Like I tell my customers, if you tell an agent, Hey, I do FBA and they don't know what you're talking about, run the other way. Cause if they don't know what the word FBA means, that means they don't know how to protect your business the right way. You need an agent who knows what you know, but just doesn't do what you do. Uh, yes. So that's us. 
<laughs> awesome. So tell, tell me a little bit about like, okay, your previous life, like before yeah. you had all this wonderful, you know, sexy e-commerce ex- experience, what was your previous life? I was a sexy banker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did. I was in banking my first career. Um, I was a branch manager, a couple of uh, large institutions and things just changed in banking and it was getting really cutthroat and I, I didn't like it. And I was married at the time and my mother-in-law was like, Hey, Liberty Mutual Insurance is hiring. Maybe you should go sell insurance. And I was like, absolutely not. I don't want to be a used car salesman. Like insurance is not for me, but I took the interview and the gentleman who interviewed me said, those men out there will outsell you every day. And I was like, I'll take the job and I'm going to prove you're wrong. Oh, I love this. I've never heard the story, but I love it. I'm like, okay, watch what, just watch me, watch watch me. So I was rookie of the year, top rep in the entire state for three years, um, third in the entire company for the three years. I accepted my award on stage, took a picture and sent it to him and said, who can't sell insurance now? Yeah, there you go. I kind of did that for right at three years. Um, and it was a captive agent. So that means I can only sell for Liberty Mutual and, and only Liberty Mutual. And I realized like about three years, your insurance company raises your rates, raises your rates, raises your rates. It's a game. I mean, as much as I hate to say it, it is. And I was losing clients based on rate. And I was like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like I worked hard for my customers and they don't want to leave me, but they have to leave me because they found something a lot cheaper. So it's like, I'm going out of my own. I'm going to broker. I'm going to get tons of different companies. So you and I get to stay married and we just divorce our company and move to a different company. So I did that. I took the leap of faith, um, started my own business. And now we have on the personal lines, we have 30 different companies on personal lines. We have like 48 different companies on the commercial lines. So now I get to shop for you, find you the best rate, find you the best coverage. And then we just divorce the company and move to a different company if we want to. So it's been great. It's absolutely amazing. And I love it. That's so awesome. And awesome that you just took charge and decided that no one else was going to decide what you were going to do for the rest of your life. And the fact that like, you not only cared about that, but you probably cared about all of those clients that you worked hard to get and had that personal relationship and then realized that like, that they want to leave, not because they don't love you, but because it's like, Hey, I mean, money talks, let's be real. We all have a budget. And as we see our insurance climbing and moving on and every year you get that bill and you don't get a phone call, you just get that bill that says, Oh, buy by the way, this is 10% right. more and you know, that sort of thing. So I, I love that you decided that your way was just going to be the way you wanted to go and that Absolutely. you weren't going to fit in anybody's box that they were going to put you in. You're going to say, okay, let's do this. So let's talk about insurance because um, a lot of people in my Facebook group and everyone else and clients of mine are like, okay, now I'm at this point where I'm taking this seriously. I'm seeing it. It's growing. I'm seeing that, you know, I'm starting to see some profit here. My dreams are coming alive but I also know I need insurance because what if, so when, when you're at that point, is there a certain point? I mean, that, that people need to really consider investing in insurance. Like what is the the baseline for that? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing is you're the first time you ship an item, you could be, it could cause damage and you could be pulled into a lawsuit. So the, the best time to buy is insurance is before you even ship your first item. Now, most of the people that you're, that are listening to this are already going to be shipping items. They're already selling. So it's going to be, you know, you're going to be behind the eight ball a little bit. So the best time to buy insurance is now, um, to kind of just back that up and give you how serious this is. A lot of our clients come to us and say, Hey, I don't sell anything risky. I'm just, you know, doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage and wholesale. Um, why do I even need insurance? So we went through a claim a couple of um, years ago, like right when I first started and this guy bought on Amazon, shipped it, UPS placed the box in front of the door. Well, he comes out, trips over the box, breaks his clavicle, breaks his hip. Well, he sues Amazon, he sues UPS and he sues our third party seller. So our third party seller has nothing to do with this man tripping over a box, but still gets pulled into that lawsuit. Well, they paid, their policy was like $700 a year and they ended up paying out $32,000 worth of legal fees just to defend this customer to say, hey, this isn't our fault, pull us from the lawsuit. 
So the best time to, to buy policy is before you need it. And you don't know when you're going to need it. So buy it now. <laughs> so let, I mean, for all my friends out there, for all of us who want to do basic math here, you guys know how much I love my numbers. I love my numbers, <laughs> especially ones that put money in my pocket, not take it out. So mm -hmm. if you just listen to that math problem really quick, $700 a year. Okay. Maybe yours varies. Mine's definitely more than that because I know it's based on sales and inventory. Okay. Right. Still that number is way less than $32,000 of legal fees, lawyers, all that kind of stuff, just to defend yourself from something you didn't even do. Right. So would you rather save, you know, the 20, I don't know, let's do the math, 25 grand or whatever, or I mean, it's not even 25 grand, it's $31,000 and right. $31,000. Okay, so even it costs you a thousand bucks. Um, thousand bucks a year saves you a boatload of headaches. It saves you a boatload of money because just in case you might be sued and the same thing with your car insurance, same thing with your health, right? I mean, my dad passed away three years ago of cancer and he had a small, but adequate life insurance policy. That was like his whole life. It didn't matter if he was, you know, life or death. It basically was like, this is going to cover the cost of my funeral and my final expenses. We were so grateful to have that because none of us at the time wanted to think about or worry for the fact that like, you can't get it, life insurance or health insurance when you've already been diagnosed with cancer. Right. It's like, we know you're, you're, you know what I mean? So with that, we were thankful to have that because one less thing to worry about, knew we were covered, knew we were protected. And I know that that's not a great thing to talk about, but honestly, until you need it and don't have it is when you really make those regrets. So it's just like that initial upfront investment. So you're, 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 it saves you time and money, right? Okay. So let's talk about what types of insurance. So yeah. if you're an e-commerce seller what are the basic coverages that we actually need? What are we covering? So Amazon says, well, when you signed up to have your pro seller account, Amazon in their terms of service says you must have a li general liability and product liability. So if you're a pro seller, you've already told Amazon you have this and that you're going to keep it the entire time that you're selling on the platform. So if you don't have a policy, then shame on you, you lied to Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> But what Amazon Oops. requires is a general liability with product liability. And let me kind of like break down the difference between those two. So general liability is what you do or say is the business. Product liability is going to be what your products do to harm someone. So like this pin, if I get on there and I make a listing for this pin and I say, this pin is going to make you look 10 pounds skinnier when you hold it. And I buy this pen and I put this pen and it does not make me look 10 pounds skinnier, then I'm going to sue you. That's general liability. Now, if I take this pen and I jab it in my eye and I go blind in my eye, that's product liability. That's what the product does to harm you. So you need both of those. <clears throat> now, what you need to be careful about is there's some insurance advertisements that are out there right now saying like, you can get a policy for $20 a month or what? $400 a year, whatever the advertisement is, it's out there. I've seen it. But if you look at the policy, it does not cover product liability. It's only covering general liability. So again, you need an agent that knows what, what you're doing and how to protect you. A general liability product, um, general liability policy is not going to protect you the right way. Anything your product does to harm someone else is not covered then. Okay, uh -oh. so two huge things that you have to have to be selling on Amazon. The other thing, there's a ton of other things that we recommend, but the other big, huge thing is inventory coverage, guys. Yes, this, this is, is all but I, I'm going to, I'm going to interject here because this is, okay. those are the two that are absolutely required by Amazon. So if you don't have those, it's time to call Ashlyn. Um, and if you don't have those, just give her a call. And of course her and her team, they know everything about like exactly what you do. So you don't have to explain to them all of these things. You're an Amazon FBA right. seller, or you sell on multiple platforms. And I hope you're all doing that too. Um, then they, there's just going to protect you because the, the next one, as I think what people are more concerned about, which is not required by Amazon, but I personally think it's the most important insurance I have because that's where my actual money is tied up. So I buy a bunch of inventory. I have some at my house. I have some at the prep center. Some of it's out of UPS truck on its way to Amazon. And then the rest of it is spread through 
throughout the country in <laughs> multiple Amazon fulfillment center warehouses and Lord knows what's happening to it there. So <laughs> that's what you mean by inventory protection, right? So let's right. talk about that. Yep. So it's broad term is called business personal property, and that's going to cover your inventory. And it's also going to cover your equipment. If you've got your dyno printer and you've got your packing materials and all of that stuff that your business owns, that needs to be protected also. Now we add that to your business. I'm sorry. We add that to your other policies. So you only have to have one policy and not five different policies all over everywhere. But um, a lot of our customers come to us and say, Hey, I have $20,000 worth of inventory in my basement, but I don't need that covered because my homeowner's insurance covers it. No, no. it does not. Your homeowner's is not going to cover your business inventory unless you lie to your insurance company and say, Hey, I have 50,000 toothbrushes because I like to brush with a new toothbrush. Every single time I brush my teeth, <laughs> they're going to know it's for business and it's, it's going to be a non-covered loss. So any type of business inventory, business personal property that you have needs to be covered at your home. Second, if you have a 3PL or a warehouse, if it is owned by you, it needs to be added to that policy. If it's owned by someone else, you're using a third party prep center, you need to call your prep center and ask, do you have coverage for my items when they're in your care, custody and control? If they say yes, say, prove it, send me a certificate of insurance because I insure over a hundred prep centers and two of them insure business, personal property of others. That's it. So make sure you're covered there. If you are not covered there, add it to your policy. We'll extend the liability to that other location and you won't have to worry about it then. I have a question about that. It's interesting. So when, when you're doing that as a prep center, who, just in your personal opinion, who do you feel like should be carrying that policy, you or them? Um, I, I personally think that the prep centers should do it. The prep centers should be covering your, your items, but they don't because it's really expensive for them to cover the items. So they're just like, oh, we'll just let, we'll just let the third party sellers cover it. It's cheaper for you to cover it. Um, I personally say just add it to your policy. You know you're paying your policy. You know it's covered. Yeah. And you're in control instead of trying to hope that that other person has the insurance, that they're paying their bills and things like that. So I'm a control freak. I guess I would just rather know that I know that it's covered and that I'm protecting myself. I'm going <laughs> to correct you and say it's not a control freak. It's not really a control <laughs> freak. It's just protecting what's yours. And right. that's really important. That's important for our mental health. That's important for our boundaries. That's important for our money and our inventory. So there is no shame in being a <laughs> control freak. I, I don't like that term. It's just more like I'm just, I'm proactive about protecting. Proactive. There you go. I'm, I'm proactive about protecting what I've earned. And that's just it. So you, you guys have worked so hard to build this business, treat it like a business. And that's what I tell my customers all the time. If you had a brick and mortar, there's no way that you would not have insurance. If you had a brick and mortar that had $50,000 in stock in your back room, there's no way that you wouldn't have insurance on that. So stop thinking that you're protected just because you sit behind a computer. You want to be a business, act like a business and get a business policy. I got a funny story about that, talking about a brick and mortar that someone actually moved to like at an online store and they were doing like both and. And what happened was the the plaza that they were in and they had their small little store and they had like a, it was like a boutique type store and they had clothing and some other things, but mostly it was like some clothing accessories and, you know, things like that. Well, next door moved in a um, Chinese restaurant. It was a small Chinese restaurant or whatever, but the smell was so overpowering that it like the clothing that they were shipping, they were getting tons of complaints about the clothing smelling like so much like, well, garlic or onion or whatever it was that people were making wow. all these massive returns and the business actually ended up like losing money because the smell from someone else's business was, you know, ruining their inventory. And like, no one wants to walk into a nice boutique smell and buy this wonderful scarf you wrap around your face and you're like, oh, this smells right. just like last night's Chinese food. So like, I mean, 
no offense to Chinese food. I'm just saying that like, that is something that people don't take seriously right. when like someone else could actually ruin what you're building up. And that could have potentially been a claim that someone else's mishandling of something has you right. know caused damage to your business. So Absolutely. just the idea there of protecting all that you're investing in. And I don't care, you guys, I don't care if you're selling a thousand dollars a month of stuff or $10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars a month. You have worked hard to build this stuff up and you need to protect it. And it's a fraction of what you might think, because what about, I mean, did you have any claims last year from like the Amazon warehouse in California that burnt? We did not because if it's an Amazon's warehouse, Amazon protects that. So this okay. is only like third party, um, third party, uh, warehouses and three PLs. But then last, I feel like it was last winter, really close to, it was like Q4 time. There was a UPS semi truck that was in a traffic jam and hit and like all the inventory boxes, everything else was all over the road, all, all kind of damaged. So people have asked about that. Well, am I covered in transit? So transit is another type of coverage. You have to add that to your policy. So if it was just a normal business owner's policy, Typically, there's only like $1,000-ish that's built into your policy for transit. You do have to add transit to your policy. And we know that. And your application, if you you know were to come to us, your application asks those types of questions. Do you have inventory in your home? Do you have inventory in a 3PL? Do you have inventory um, in transit? Like we ask, are you sourcing outside? Another big thing is like, if you go to Target and you get $5,000 worth of product and then you go to Kohl's and your car gets broken into and that $5,000 worth of product is stolen out of your car, your car insurance company is not going to cover that. Again, personal is personal, business is business, and those policies do not over um, overlap. If you had that business personal property in transit, we cut you a check and say, here, go replace it, go buy some more inventory. But if you didn't, you're out that product. You know what you're really buying with insurance? Peace of mind, mind. guys. Peace mm -hmm. of mind. You know what? And it's funny because I just recently I, I was just going over this quote because, you know, just life is so busy and everything else. But like, honestly, it's like, if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. And what's too expensive right now is that it's costing you your peace if you're not covered because what happens is the disaster after that. So, and of course, with insurance is, Everybody knows insurance companies don't like to pay out claims, right? That's the big thing with insurance is like, well, I pay and pay and pay and I never get anything back. Well, when you have a policy, the insurance companies don't want to pay a claim. So they're going to fight like tooth and nails to make sure that whatever happens, that they're protecting you. So if you get a frivolous lawsuit, they're going to protect you and say, hey, this is not our customer's responsibility. You need to back off. Um, you know, $32,000 worth of defense costs for a $700 policy was just to say, go away. This isn't our customer's fault. Now, if she wouldn't have had a policy, then they would have had to pay that $32,000 out of pocket. So it is a huge peace of mind to pick up the phone and say, hey, I don't want to deal with this. I have insurance. You handle it. And if you've ever been through a home an, a home invasion or a hurricane or a uh, house burning down or a theft or any of those types of things, or it, most of the time, especially if you live like in a condo or a shared building or an apartment or something like that, the chances are so much higher that somebody else can do something stupid to burn your place to the ground or have smoke damage or have water damage. I mean, I'm sure we could sit here and like talk about all the crazy claims that you guys have heard of and like crazy stuff that like you're not in control of her. I mean, I live in a single family house. I feel like if this place burnt down, it would probably be somebody's fault here because they were doing something stupid or just made a mistake. But um, when we lived in a townhouse, uh, you, you never know, like the neighbors could do something stupid and burn your house down too. So those, are, those type of things, you never know what you need and what you're covered for. So you've got to ask those questions. I had, a, uh, we had a family member have a house burned down um, probably five years ago and they were shocked at what was not covered in all of that and all the documentation, everything else you guys the same thing is for your business would you protect your house your assets do you have your jewelry listed do you have all this stuff knowing that this is what needs to be protected because 
I knew firsthand when I first got insurance that like my homeowner's insurance is not going to cover. I mean, y'all can't see it, but there's a ton of fancy equipment around me. I'm talking about podcast stuff. I got ring lights. I've got just all this different stuff around me to help me produce this wonderful show. And that's not covered under my, my, my homeowner's insurance, even though this is my home office. And so I literally have a designated policy that covers every single thing in here, including everything I buy and sell on a regular basis and all that, because in the event of, I don't know, something happening here. I just want that check and I want to be able to replace right. everything I have like tomorrow. So, and not have to worry about it and not have to sit there and think about how, how am I going to do this? How am I going to afford it? Where am I going to do how, it's done? It's done and it's over with. Yeah, it might be a couple of pieces of paper that you have to submit to an insurance company, but at least you know you're not going to have to pay out of pocket and that you have that coverage. And you guys, and it's it, cheap. Yes. It's cheap. It's not that expensive, but let me tell you guys, I know. Okay. So we we've sold you insurance already, right? You guys already know you need it. You've already told Amazon. If you have an account, you already told them you have a policy. Um, so we don't want to make liars out of you, right? right. Um, so you have a policy <laughs> and you want to cover yourself, but also it not only gives you a peace of mind, but it literally sets you apart from all the other people that literally you're legit now. You're a legitimate business owner. If something goes wrong, you are protecting yourself, your assets, all the things that you have. And honestly, the more we have, the more we need to protect it because we've worked hard for that. And could you imagine more money, more just, problems? Yeah, more <laughs> money, more. That is so true. I actually didn't know that until it became my reality. Right? <laughs> I used to laugh at that and be like, oh yeah, what kind of problems do people have when they actually have finances or money? Mm -hmm. I mean, I went, you know, being broke ain't no joke, but at the same time, it's it's actually simpler because you don't have to worry about all that <laughs> stuff. But then you start being in protection mode, right? Because we've worked hard to get where we are. And since we've worked hard to get where we are, we don't want to see it washed away most of the time from someone else's stupidity. Exactly. Honestly, we're not burning our own houses down. Honestly, we're probably not doing some, you know, if it's a prep center or somewhere else or having your own inventory, like it's usually not us doing the stupid thing, but what right. we can do is the smart thing by protecting that. So when people call you because they will, um, cause I said, so they have to call. <laughs> so when they call you, what do they need to prepare ahead of time so that when they get you guys on the phone or they start filling out your questionnaire, what are the duckies they need to have in a row yep. to just, you know, get in touch with you? The biggest thing that we have to have is the store link. So getting on Seller Central and getting the link to your store. So insurance is all about risk. If I'm selling fidget spinners with knives on the end of it, it's going to be a heck of a lot more expensive if I um, than I'm selling a stapler or whatever. So we have to go through and look at what you're selling, make sure that there's nothing that the insurance company doesn't want to insure. So that's the biggest, biggest thing. Um, the other thing is anticipated sales. So your insurance goes by what you think that you're going to sell for the next 12 months. And I know that's really hard for you guys to say, Hey, I think I'm going to sell this. Um, but we do have to have some kind of number. Now at the end of your policy term, the insurance company will do an audit and you say, okay, here's what I actually did sell. Now, if I overestimated my sales, then you're going to get a credit towards your next policy. If you underestimated your sales, guess what? You're going to get a bill. So if I said, Hey, I'm only going to do a hundred thousand dollars this year and I do a million dollars, guess what? They're going to want their premium for that. So you're just going to make your best guess on what you think your anticipated sales are going to be for the next 12 months. Now, if you want that at prep center covered, we're going to need the address to the prep center. Other than that, you guys are, you're going to know the rest of the questions. How much inventory coverage do you want? Are you using your personal vehicle um, to do sourcing and going to the post office and things like that? So We've done this 4,000 times. We have over 4,000 e-commerce clients. So we have streamlined the process really, really easy. And I promise you, if you're not doing private label, it'll take you like maybe seven minutes to complete the application and get everything submitted. So we don't ask a bunch of BS questions that we don't care the answers to. We ask very minimal questions that we need to know the answers to, to get you a quote that's accurate. Um, if you don't want everything that we add in that in that policy, then you can say, hey, Ashlyn, I don't want the coverage for my personal property. I just want the bare minimums. Take that other stuff on there, off of there. But at least we gave you what a full protection would look like. And then you can kind of take off what you don't need. 
Awesome. That is really, really helpful. Now I do have one kind of a wayward question here, but I had somebody ask me this before and my answer is always, I don't know, but I will get back to you. So this is my get back to you for that person that asked the question is, does, do you offer some sort, or is there a way to ensure your business for like, suspensions? Well, I'm trying, I'm trying to word it in the right way because it's like, it's, it's really hard to kind of wrap your mind around it, I guess, but like, you know, suspensions or like, like undo things that happen outside of our control from Amazon. So not inventory loss or, or liability or being sued for something, but you know, some sort of copyright infringement that eventually shuts down your account. And then they hold on to your inventory for so long and they don't give your money for 90 days, almost like an Aflac for Amazon right. type thing. So copyright infringement is covered under your general liability. So if you do something that's copywritten um, and you get sued for copyright, that's covered to defend you under your general liability. Now, once you get suspended for doing that, um, there is not a policy currently for suspension. Um, I was the one that created it before a couple of years ago. We tried to get it to work with the carrier. It wasn't working. I cut the contract, the nope. Either we do it my way or we do it no way. And so we stop that. I am in negotiations. We are working on a new policy that is going to work better. It is coming. Stay tuned. It's not here yet, <laughs> but it's gonna be working more like a disability policy than the old way. So if you get suspended, you buy your limit, you buy your coverage and we cut you a check. So I get suspended for somebody taking down my listing. I have a thousand dollars a day for 30 days. Here's your check until you get unsuspended. It's coming, just bear with me. It's been a long process to try to make sure that it works the right way this time. For sure. Well, I appreciate that you guys are working on that. I know there's a lot of, you know, some people really just want to, it's their peace of mind, right? I mean, I've seen suspensions destroy people because yeah. even if it wasn't a, whether it's their fault or not, doesn't necessarily matter. It's like, this is, you know, your business, your whole lifeline. If you're banking on this as your only stream of income and somehow Amazon does something to say, okay, we're cutting you off as of immediately and you've got payroll to meet, you're in a whole world of trouble. So you want right. to make sure that you're protecting. I think a lot of people, business owners um, don't necessarily understand all that because your normal business, you could probably foresee that. I mean, this year, I'm sure with the pandemic, so many people are scrambling and not knowing exactly what to do and how to do it because all of a sudden, you know, your restaurant closed because the government mandated that your restaurant right. closes, you know what, I don't know that there's protocol for that, but the right. reality is like, we definitely need to be um, protecting what we're investing in and figuring out like how, how that's going to work. So I know that you guys, I'm glad you're working on that. Cause I know that's a big fear for a lot of people. And is there a way to sort of ensure yourself? So stay tuned everyone and make sure that you're following <laughs> Ashlyn um, and where she goes. So tell all of our amazing mommy income and Amazon file friends where they can get in touch with you. And you guys make sure that you tell Ashlyn that you came from mommy income, not because I'm being paid for that. Cause I'm not, not because I'm an affiliate. Cause I'm not, I always will would be. But the idea here is because I want you guys to have the best. I want you guys to have someone who understands what you're going through, understands what you need and can just cut to the chase and give you exactly what you need to protect yourself. And Ashlyn to date is the only person I know that can handle all of those questions the best way. So her and her team are the best. And I only send you the best. So <laughs> how can they find you? And if you guys mention this podcast, we'll do 50% off our agency fee. So Woo. make sure you mention the podcast. Mention and like the Mommy said, Income we, Podcast it, it, because you're going to get yeah. discounts. We love discounts. Just saying. And, and like she said, she's not an affiliate because we're not allowed to pay commission to non-licensed people. So this is all for you guys and making sure that you're protected the right way. So to get in touch with us, you can go to www.ecom.insure, I-N-S-U-R-E, no.com, just dot .sure. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Ashlyn D. Haddon. You can email us at sales at Ashlyn Haddon Insurance. We're on Facebook, Ashlyn Haddon Insurance. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on TikTok now. <laughs> Everybody is everywhere. So Ashlyn Haddon Insurance or ecom.insure. <laughs> ecom.insure. Of course, that's a great place. We're just enjoying the goofiness sure. on TikTok, like just showing who we are and how, like, we're not like a normal insurance agency. We're just, we're, 
we're a group of women. We're all women. We're all mommies, all of us. So it's just like, you know, showing our personality and the goofy things. Um, Z dressed up as Santa the other day and we have like goofing off in the office, her Santa. So it's just enjoying life. I mean, we spend so much time at work. Let's, let's have some fun doing it. For sure. I love that you guys are all women owned and that you guys are just pursuing your dreams on your own terms and your own side. I just, I just love that. And we're happy to support you and your team and everything else. And um, so you guys make sure ecom.insure insure or Ashlyn Haddon all, all over all the social medias. And of course the links and all that kind of stuff will be below this episode in the show notes and all over social. So you guys, thank you so much, Ashlyn, for taking the time to come here and just inform us on how to protect our assets because our assets we worked hard for, right? right. <laughs> so awesome. All right. Same time, same place next week on the Amazon files. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.